From a period in human history where shit piled so high in the streets that people had to create platform shoes, come some of the most foundational theories of mind that have ever existed. Bear witness to one of the greatest illogical battles of logic as the best and brightest medieval minds make assertions so absurd that cannot be forgotten. Meet our stars, St. Augustine Boethius, St. Thomas Aquinas, John Dunn Scots, and Williams of Ockham as they struggle to create meaning in their otherwise irrelevant lives. For the first time ever on the big screen, meet St. Augustine of Hippo. His lack of confidence in his intelligence led him to the profound conclusion that human knowledge would be impossible if God did not illuminate the human mind. His huge ego led him to write what is regarded as the first autobiography, in which he attempted to flatter God to ensure a spot in heaven. He threw all of humanity under the bus and claimed that the moral and natural evils of the world are the result of people's materialistic and self-interested tendencies. Not only did he absolve God of all responsibility for evils, he endlessly rambled on about how all of the good in the world was created by God. Boethius's inability to find a lady friend led him to conjure a character named Lady Philosophy. He became so obsessed with the idea of her that he wrote an entire dialogue between her and a fictionalized version of himself in a prison cell. His fantasy land outlined a world where everything was, by nature, good and forced Lady Philosophy to console him by sh showing him that he had no reason to complain about his circumstances. He hops on the bandwagon of divine flattery by asserting that God is the good which all things desire and also absolves him of all blame for evil in the world. While St. Thomas Aquinas is widely regarded as one of the biggest know-it-alls of all time, he wouldn't stop talking about the fact that he recognized two different kinds of knowledge, sensory and scientific, even though no one really cared. As we know by now, the strongest thinkers of the Middle Ages were total suburbs, and Aquinas was no exception. He claimed that the highest knowledge that humans could possess was the knowledge of God, and that God's knowledge was the most detailed scientific knowledge of all. John Dunn Scottis finally gives us a content we want to hear, and outlines the four classes of things that can be known with certainty, without totally sucking up to the big man upstairs. He claims these four classes to be things that are knowable, simpliciter, things that are known through experience, things that directly concerns one's own actions, and things that are knowable through human senses. William of Ockman took it upon himself to revise Dunn Scottis' theory of intuitive knowledge, even though no one really even asked him to. He made the matter even more complex by dividing intuitive knowledge into two kinds of knowledge, natural, in which an object exists, someone judges that it exists, and the object causes the knowledge, and supernatural, where the object does not exist. He was the first philosopher to really develop the idea of mental language and thought way too much about grammar. This holiday season, visit a theater near you to experience the full force of the minds of medieval philosophy.